Okay, so the next step will be to run into something like this. Now, of course, when you look at that, what you see that what sticks out is different, of course, is that parentheses again. And it always screams to do something here first. So there's nothing to do inside of it. So we're going to multiply by the 8. 8 times 2x is 16x. 8 times negative 7, negative 56. And what are we going to do to solve this from here? Add the 56. 16x equals 80, and then divide by 16. x equals 5. So these aren't too horrible to do, but they can get a lot more complicated because you can add more pieces into them. We could have... Something like this. I'm going to have you try that one in your notes. See if you can make it work. So again, the first thing we have to do is deal with the parentheses. Nothing to do inside them, so we're going to multiply by the 5. 5 times 3x is 15x. 5 times 1 is 5. And we can't forget, we still have the plus 2x over here, equals 56. So now then we are going to combine the 15x and the 2x on the same side of the equation, so we can just put them together and make 17x. We still have the plus 5, equals 56. Then what? Subtract the 5, 17x equals 51, and then we divide by 17, x equals 3. And as always, if we were unsure, we could put the 3 back in for x and make sure we got the same value on each side of the equation, and we will. How many of you had that one right? Good. Let's try one that's a little bit more difficult. <clears throat> Give that one a shot and you know it. See how you do. Now when we have one like this, it requires a lot of simplifying and combining. We can work on each side of the equation separately. So we work on the left side here first. Again, the parentheses tell us we have to do something there first. Nothing to do in the parentheses, so we're going to multiply by the 7. 7 times 2x gives us 14x. 7 times 5 is positive 35. Now we can't forget the minus 4x here. Now before I go over to the other side, I'm going to combine what I can here. And that is 14x and negative 4x, which makes what? 10x. So 10x plus 35 on the left side of the equation. On the right side, I'm going to simplify what I can now. And just like before, nothing to do inside the parentheses, so I'm going to multiply by the 5. 5 times 6x is 30x. 5 times negative 3 is a negative 15. And I have to remember the positive 4 there. Now I have to combine what I can. I cannot combine anything with the 30x, but I do have negative 15 and positive 4 makes negative 11. From this point, what do I have to do? Well, I have to get rid of one of the x's. The 10 is the smaller one, so I'm going to subtract 10x. So over here I'm left with 35. 30x minus 10x is 20x minus 11 is still sitting over there. Then what do I do? I 
right, we'll add 11. 46 equals 20x. And then, divide by 20. 2.3 equals x. Yes, we can get fractions or decimals now. Any questions? We thought you did it wrong because it didn't come out right. I'm going to have to try this one quick. See if you can see the catch here. I'll give you a couple minutes. Can you see it? The problem is the minus in front of the parentheses here. So what we have to do is we treat it like it's a negative 1 in front of the parentheses. So now the 2x doesn't change. This is negative 1 times everything in the parentheses. So negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1 equals 16. From here, what do I do? I'll combine 2x and negative 5x, mate. Negative 3x plus 1 equals 16. And then subtract 1. Negative 3x equals 15. And then divide by negative 3. x equals negative 5. And yes, we can get negative answers now too. How many of you had negative 5 for that one? Good. This one's just a little different than what we've seen. It's not really particularly difficult to do. What would you do to solve this one? X has been divided by 7, so to solve it, you're going to multiply by 7. So that makes 7 go away there. X equals 5 times 7 is 35. So on something like this, what would you do? Subtract 2, very good. Then multiply by 3. So x equals 6. Well, so far, everything we've looked at the variable, x in most cases, has only had one, it could be combined into one single occurrence. But we might run into something like this. x has been divided by 3, and it's also been divided by 5. There are actually a couple of different ways we can approach this. One of them is to simply do this. x over 3 is really one-third x. x over 5 can be thought of as one-fifth x. If you're not sure why I could do that, well, think about it. If one-third times x is one-third times x over 1, 1 times x is x, 3 times 1 is 3. So one-third times x is the same as x over 3. From here, this is just like if I had 2x and 7x, I would add the two of them together. I do the same thing here. I have to add 1 third and 1 fifth. What's my common denominator going to be? 15. 1 third will be 5 fifteenths. 1 fifth will be 3 fifteenths. Now I can add them together. 5 and 3 make 8 fifteenths. X equals 16. How would I solve that? Well, just like if I had 3X equals 12 or 5X equals 35 or whatever, I would divide by whatever is multiplying the X. Here, what's multiplying the X is 8 fifteenths. So I am going to divide 
by eight fifteenths. So that's gone. X equals sixteen divided by eight fifteenths is thirty. We get sixteen over one divided by eight over fifteen. That becomes sixteen over one times fifteen over eight. Cross cancel the sixteen and the eight to get one and two. Two times fifteen is thirty over one. So yes, x equals thirty. So I'm going to start you guys off slowly with something like 3 fourths x equals 7 and 1 third. Try that one in your notes. So looking at this one, x has been multiplied by 3 fourths. So to solve it, we must divide by 3 fourths. So that's gone. X equals 7 and 1 third divided by 3 fourths. Well, 7 and 1 third, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 1 is 22 thirds. I said dividing by 3 fourths, we are both play by. <coughs> Excuse me. The reciprocal of 4 over 3. 4 over 3. So we have 22 times 4 is 88. 3 times 3 is 9, which is 9 and 7 ninths. Anybody get that? <laughs> the fraction calculator can be very helpful with those as well. So what if we try something like this? X plus 2 fifths equals 8 and 1 fourth. What would we do to solve that one? What's happened to our variable? Well, they've added 2 fifths. This is the same as if we had x plus 3 equals 17, right? We just subtract the 3. Same here. We're just going to subtract the 2 fifths. It looks a lot more complicated because the fractions are there, but it's really the same simple one-step equation. So 8 and 1 fourth minus 2 fifths is going to be 7 and... 1720s. I'll leave it up to you guys to do the fractions, subtract the fractions. Right? Anybody need me to go through that? So then let's look at 3 eighths x minus 5 and 1 fourth equals 6 and 1 half. Give that one a shot. See what you come up with. So the first step is to do what? We'll add the 5 and 1 fourth. So 3 eighths x equals... 6 and a half plus 5 and 1 fourth is 11 and 3 fourths. Then what do we have to do? X is multiplied by 3 eighths, so we'll divide by 3 eighths. So we're left with just X here. 11 and 3 fourths divided by 3 eighths. Well, 11 times 4 is 44, plus 3 is 47 fourths. That's going to be times 8 over 3. 4 and 8 cross cancel. Give me 1 and 2. 47 times 2 is 94. 1 times 3 is 3. So that's 31 and 1 third. So X is 31 and 1 third. How many of you got that? Cool. What if I use, actually let's make this a more difficult. Something like this. 
It's no different than any of the others. It's not that difficult, just it's the decimals. So look past the decimals and try it. I'll give you a shot at it. So we have an X on each side here. So we have to get rid of one of them. The smaller one's going to be the 1.3. So I'm going to subtract 1.3X from both sides. So 2.7 minus 1.3 is 1.4X. I still have the minus 1.2 here. On the other side, all that's left is the positive 4.6. So now to get x by itself, I have to add 1.2. So 1.4x equals 5.8 and divide by 1.4. So 5.8 divided by 1.4 is going to give me 4.142857143 approximately. Any questions? Did anybody get that? How about here? 3x plus 7 over 4. All that's happened here is another thing has been done to the variable. Here, x has been, the order of operations is you have to do everything on top first. So x has been multiplied by 3, then 7 has been added to it. Then after that was done, the whole thing was divided by 4. So when we go to take it apart, we reverse that order. We're going to multiply by 4 first. Gets rid of that 4. These are just 3x plus 7 over here. Multiplying by 4 on the other side, 7 times 4 is 28. And now it's back to that form where we know how to solve it. Subtract 7, give us 3x equals 21, and divide by 3. x equals 7. What do you think? Let's step it up a notch and let you guys have a shot at one. Give that one a shot and you know, see how you do. So the first step is all divided by 7 eighths, so we're going to have to multiply by 7 eighths. So that's gone, giving us 2 thirds x minus 1 fourth equals, over here if I multiply by 7 eighths, I end up getting 7 tenths. Now that it's in this form, I can go ahead and add one fourth. Adding one fourth to the seven tenths gives us nineteen twentieths. And then we can divide by the two thirds. X equals nineteen twentieths divided by two thirds is fifty seven fortieths, or one and seventeen fortieths. Or 1.425 if you did it out as a decimal. So we can do the exact same thing as we did with our numbers with fractions and decimals. Um, also, we can do the exact same thing with letters. If I have something like this AX plus B equals C, and I want to solve that for X. I'm doing the exact same process. It's exactly like if I had 3x plus 5 equals 17. How would I start out solving this equation over here? Well, I would subtract 5, wouldn't I? Maybe with 3x equals 12. Well, I do the same thing over here. x has been multiplied by a. And then B has been added to it. So I will subtract B. It's gone. Leaves me with AX. The difference is over here I can combine the numbers. Here C minus B is just going to have to stay C minus B. I can't combine those. The next thing I do over here is divide by the 3 to get X by itself. 
I have to do the same thing over here. I have to divide by A to get X by itself. Again, the difference is here, 12 can be divided by 3. Here, C minus B divided by A. We have to use that idea again that fractions and division can be interchanged. We can go back and forth between them. So in fractional form, C minus B divided by A is just C minus B over A. And that is as far as we can go with it. Generally, we're not going to use generic equations like that in that form. It's going to be something more useful, like in the electricity equation, where voltage is equal to current times resistance. And you're asked to solve it for the current. What would we do to get I by itself here? So you would divide by R, get rid of the R, because I is multiplied by R. So V divided by R is just going to be V over R. So V over R equals I, or I equals V over R. Now one type of equation that we didn't really look at much looked like this. Oops, let me make this more user friendly for us. So what's been done to x here? It's been squared. So to solve it, what's the opposite of squared? Square root. So x squared, the square root takes away the squared, so that's just x. The square root of 16 is 4. So we could have something like 3x squared equals 75. Now x has still been squared, but if we're thinking order of operations, the first thing that was done to x was squaring it. So we, that's going to be the last thing that we're going to remove from the x. So for x was squared and then multiplied by 3. So to take it apart, we're first going to get rid of the 3. We're going to divide by the 3. Divided by 3 makes the 3 go away. x squared equals 75 divided by 3 is 25. And then we get rid of the squared by square rooting it. The squared and square root canceled out. x equals square root of 25 is 5. Now if you're paying really close attention, you might realize um, 25 has two square roots. It's either 5 or a negative 5. For our purposes, we're just going to stick with the positive answer because not very often in any sort of natural situation that it's a negative number in our solution. Okay, let's give you guys something to work on here in the book. Page 253, exercise 6.3, 1 through 59, the odd. And page 258. Exercise 6.4, 1 through 25, the odd. So I'll give you guys the last 15 minutes to finish those up. On Wednesday, we will have our last lecture of this unit, which means next week, Monday, in the first hour, will be the unit test.